You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. Just imagine for a moment that we had some kind of amazing, advanced technology that allowed for space travel and we could teleport to an alien world where there was life, intelligent life, and you could go there for a once-only trip. What would you do uh, when you got there? I think you'd be incredibly curious and you'd want to see as much of this alien world as you could to explore their civilization and understand them and, and try and understand, you know, everything that you could about this world. You wouldn't just set up a home on this alien world and sit there. You'd want to be out and about and finding out about it with your own eyes. Now, what if there were some technical hassles to overcome in traveling and moving around this world, this alien world? I think you'd be quite assertive about really trying to make the most of your trip and really trying to see everything that you could and do as much as you could on this world. And I think that's a good metaphor for life itself on our planet because we are only here for a short visit. We only have one life to live. And if you don't travel and see what your planet has to offer, you're going to miss the opportunity. The metaphor is also relevant for our life on our planet because there are hassles and there are restrictions that we're born into that limit our freedom to see and to do as much as we want on Earth because the world is currently divided up into arbitrary countries and we are born into some country or other by happenstance. And this episode is really about what we can do to overcome the limits to freedom imposed by being born into any particular nation. How can we live as internationally as possible? Now, obviously, there's a huge limit to what we as individuals can do to change the way that the world is divided politically. And since I don't believe in involvement in the political process anyway... Uh, This podcast isn't going to be about trying to change nation states by getting involved in voting and those kinds of things. I certainly don't want any kind of world government. And I hope that one day, as Henry David Thoreau said, we'll learn to live without the need for government at all. But I do want to talk about what can be done as an individual to get the most out of living on the planet in spite of the limitations imposed by countries. So I guess what I'm talking about is overcoming the circumstances of your birth, the happenstance that you happen to have been born in a particular country and raised in that particular culture, limits the extent to which you're able to enjoy all of the amazing things that Earth has to offer. So... Just from my own experience and and what I've seen from other people, I want to suggest a few ways in which um, you can live as an international person and, as far as possible, overcome the limits of your country. The first and most obvious way of doing so is travel. Um, I love travel and I've been to many countries, um, every continent except Africa, which are definitely still want to go to before I die. Travel is a fantastic opportunity to see the different places that you might want to experience living longer term, to actually get beyond you know, the limits of the country that you were born in so that you can see the different choices that there are for different ways to live. You know, Not just whether or not it's uh, different types of climate, but also big cities, smaller towns, more rural areas economies that are more developed or economies that are still developing and growing quickly, each of these places has its own advantages and disadvantages 
and by having experienced them more firsthand, you can have the freedom to actually start to choose where you would want to live. You've still got to overcome the barriers to getting there, but at least having seen places, you can actually make an informed choice about where you want to spend your limited time on the planet rather than just having been born into one part of it and then living out your life there. And, you know, we, we actually live in a time when international travel relative to history is incredibly safe and incredibly easy and cheap. Air travel makes it possible to go anywhere on the planet. And if you're able to listen and understand this podcast, then you're able to save up the budget for international travel. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's totally doable to see as much of the world as you want to during your lifetime. And beyond just traveling on holiday, I think living abroad for an extended period of time, you know, months or years, is a really, really great opportunity to live beyond the circumstances of your country, to free yourself of the constraints of growing up and living in just one country. Now, obviously, there are immigration controls and restrictions and so forth. So this is definitely more difficult than just traveling um, on holiday. But it's also very doable. If you live within Europe, you can just up and move anywhere else within the European Union very easily. But even if you live in other countries, you will probably find that there are ways of spending up to six months abroad in different places. And I, obviously I can't go into all the details, but you need to look into what the opportunities are for a, an extended stay abroad, including working, and how to do that in a way that's you know, safe for you. I lived in Germany, in Berlin, um, on and off for many years uh, during my 20s, and I found that to be a really, really great experience. It certainly gave me a different perspective on my own country of origin, and I got to see the world from a different place, and uh, it was a fantastic thing to do. And the next thing I'm going to suggest is actually connected to living abroad, which is uh, the opportunity of learning a foreign language. It may be that you live in a country where multiple languages are spoken, in which case you can learn it at home and it can have direct value for you. But I found personally that living abroad was a, an amazing way to actually learn a different language to think with. Because I learned French in school and I didn't really learn it. But when I went to live in Germany, I really was able to immerse myself in a foreign language and, and think with the language. When you start to actually dream in a foreign language and think every day in a foreign language, your brain has a different language to think with. And it is like a different, in a way, it's a different operating system. You actually have the opportunity to think slightly differently and you can think in two languages. So you can kind of reboot your brain in either one of the languages to think about something. And that really is a, a great opportunity to overcome you know, the, the accident of your birth, you happen to have been brought up with this one language and without being conscious of it, that actually does form the way that you think. The next suggestion that I've got for overcoming nationalism and the boundary of countries is to think about putting some of your assets abroad. And this is really a question of political diversification. So what you're doing is to say, OK, well, I'm going to take some of my assets and I'm going to put them in a foreign country just in case things go totally weird in my own country and I have to leave. Then I know that I have some assets sitting abroad. Harry Brown talks about this a lot in his uh, concept of the permanent portfolio and he suggests that you put your gold um, portion of your portfo investment portfolio in a foreign country. Um, because for various reasons, gold is a good asset to hold in a foreign country. You can put it in a bank vault and 
it's a hard asset, so it has that benefit too. Plus, it's an international asset. You can convert it into any any currency. Anyway, we talk more about that in some of the podcasts that I've done on investment um, about the permanent portfolio. But just the concept of holding some of your assets abroad, whatever those assets are, the point is, if you can get to a point where you don't have everything that you own in one country, then you have the opportunity, if things get really weird, to leave and to still have some assets accessible to you. And when I say things get really weird, I'm talking about things like war. You know, here in Europe, the Second World War was a lot closer than um, for those people who were listening to this in the States. It's only within a couple of generations uh, in Europe that the potential for an invading army to take over was a very real threat. Or simply a new gang of thugs to uh, have control of the state. You know, if you were Jewish in Germany during the Nazi period, that would have been a total nightmare that you would be wanting to get out of as quickly as possible. Or anybody, really, who was in Russia when the communists took over, you would certainly be wanting to get out before you were expropriated and potentially faced uh, labor camps and all of the atrocities that Solzhenitsyn talks about in the Gulag Archipelago. And if you have some assets abroad and you find yourself in a situation where you need to leave, then at least you've got that opportunity. And I think it just makes you sleep better at night to know that, to know that you have a certain amount of political diversification, just in case. One more uh, opportunity for freedom that you can attain in our world from the limits of nation states is to achieve dual nationality, if you can. Um, it's not something that's possible for all people um, with their current passport. You know, there's actually it's a lot more difficult for some people than others. But just something to think about, um, which I'm certainly thinking about if we have kids, uh, is to think about you know where those kids are born and what opportunity there is for them to get dual nationality from birth. I think that's really something to consider um, as a gift to your children. I realize, of course, that there's a lot of practical issues involved in that. But nonetheless, I just wanted to share with you a story that I mean, from my childhood, I very much remember my cousin having dual nationality because he was born in the States. And the freedom that that gave him to go and live and work in the States whenever he wanted or to live and work in Europe whenever he wanted that was a real opportunity that he had just from that fact of where he was born, that he got dual nationality. Now, of course, an American passport has various downsides too, um, especially if you want to um, expatriate. America is one of the only countries in the world that doesn't really have such a concept as non-resident tax status. So there are downsides to certain passports, and of course you wouldn't want your children to be roped into military service or any of these kinds of things. But if you can, I think it's a really, really interesting thing to consider that you could give your children dual nationality um, just by being based abroad for a short while um, when they're born. And finally, I think it's, you know, if you can get dual nationality yourself, um, if you have, sometimes it's through ancestry or other way, other means, or even if you're resident abroad for a long time and there's the opportunity to apply for dual nationality, I think that's worth considering too, just as a way of having more options. Now, I certainly don't mean to suggest that it's easy to get dual nationality or to give your kids um, the gift of dual nationality. And I know there are loads and loads of constraints. That's not something that I've done, so I'm just suggesting it as something to think about. But even if you don't do anything as complicated as, as that, any opportunity that you have to internationalize yourself in terms of your experience and your outlook and your assets, I think is really worthwhile. Even if what you can do at the moment is only very limited, any little bit of internationalizing yourself that you can do is worthwhile. And it's great fun too. 
travel, living abroad, learning a different language, learning to think outside your culture are all really enriching experiences and that's what life's all about. So I hope you find this useful and I hope you get the chance to explore and enjoy all of the incredible, diverse and wonderful places that this world has to offer. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.